we invited four different artists from different uh, cultural disciplines, from film, theater, from the visual arts and from design to work on us and conceive their own kind of vision uh, to bear on sculpture from works of the Tate Collection. And they all develop different kind of ideas and presentations in the display. Each section is very different and uh, quite exciting. I tried to put together a, a, a varied group of works and works that interest me. I mean, there's such a big range because it was the whole of the 20th century up to the present day. It's very exciting to do. A big collection like this is filled with absolute treasures. And it's like it's been asked into a, a sweet shop to be uh, to be offered the opportunity of of going through this wealth of things. It's very interesting. Every exhibition I've ever curated, the same thing happens. There are things that you want but you can't get. They're committed to Tate Modern, or they're be they're damaged and they're being repaired. There's some problem. But that makes you go back into the collection, and then you go into the collection, and then you discover something that nobody has ever really shown. That you've never seen yourself, and so the thing becomes a mixture of the familiar and the unfamiliar, of favorites that you really want to include, and then discoveries that you didn't even know existed until you went looking. Sometimes exhibitions and art galleries can be uh, quite boring when sculpture's involved, and, uh, and so you came up with the idea of a... Well, a nightclub in an art gallery, basically. Because he's young, you see, he's younger than me, so they, 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 at his age they think about nightclubs quite a lot. It can bring a new audience in, uh, and if they come in initially to think what 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 the heck's going on here? It's a there's a dance floor in there's a dance floor in the centre of a, a gallery. But then they might just then, if we're all lucky, go around and look at, and look at all the exhibits, find out a bit more about it, uh, uh, and be enthused. And, and and I think Jack, you summed it up when you said that how you can find galleries quite oppressive, can't you? And yeah, just restrictive and lifeless sometimes. Um, you know especially with people my age, I think you associate galleries as being quiet, quiet spaces and lifeless spaces. So I wanted to sort of try and engage a different target audience by doing something a little bit different with this space. We, we were interested in the relationship between what people might think of as sculpture and performance, the idea of performance. The, the days when people would be, you know, run horrified from the building to find that uh, uh, you know a video could be a sculpture or a, a text could be a sculpture or a text could be a performance. I think those days are, are, are gone. Take Liverpool contact me um, a while ago now just to sort of with the idea of doing something interactive for this exhibition that we're standing in right now. I came up with the idea of, I said, would it be possible to take some of the objects out of the gallery, put them somewhere unusual, um, and then generate a kind of quick debate around the object about whether they were art or they weren't art. Channel 4 also came in and agreed to commission these films as part of their Three Minute Wonder series. <clears throat> it kind of proved my point that a strong piece of art is a strong piece of art, and it really doesn't matter where you put it. Mm -hmm. You know, it should survive.